All right, hi everyone. Welcome to today's webinar uh, series, which is on build your trading strategy part two or three, which will cover day trading. All right, let's just wait uh for for a minute for everyone to start uh tuning in. All right, great to see everyone here. All right, um. All right, so just want to make sure you guys can uh, hear me loud and clear and see my screen as well. You should be seeing the first page of the presentation slides, which is uh, Tick Mill, Build Your Trading Strategy, two out of three day trading. Right, and do take note, we've got the uh, Q&A and the chat windows open as well. So do not hesitate to drop your questions in these two boxes at any point during today's uh, webinar. All right. Okay, great. Okay. Right. Before we uh, kick things off, let's go through the disclaimer as usual. Please take note that the material provided here is for information purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. The views, information, or opinions expressed in the text belong solely to the author and not to the author's employer, organization, committee, or other group or individual or company. And also do take note of the high risk warning that comes with trading CFDs. They are complex instruments and come with a high risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. All right, okay. So my name is Ketan Ramachandra. Uh, so this webinar series is brought to you in a special partnership between Tickmill and Everest Fortune Group, where we've been the finalists for best FX and equity research for the following years, 2019, 2020, and 2021. All right, here's the agenda for today. Um, right, so day trading, what, what do we need to look out for? So if you're going to be day trading, we need to be looking out for catalysts, right? This could be bullish catalysts or bearish catalysts. So one of the main drivers for this would be key news events uh, that are coming out every day, right? There's, of course, ranging from low impact events to high impact events. So how do we search for such events and how do we identify them? We'll be looking through at that. So key news events definitely will offer a great opportunity, uh, be it to the long or short side for currencies or commodities, right? Okay, then we we'll look at referencing the higher time frame. Although we are day trading, it's just good to have a slightly higher uh, overview of how the market is currently trading or how that particular instrument is trading. So uh, as we know, we get an idea of whether it's in a, bullish trend bearish trend or has it just been ranging sideways right and then we will we'll also look at which time frame should you use for day trading now this would be more something i would say between uh five to 15 minutes uh time frame and for the higher time frame i'd be uh one hour should be more than sufficient to get a good sense of the general trend and then also we look at identifying momentum and then taking the trade All right. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Bestin, you have your hands up. Do you have a question? Right. Okay. I believe everyone should be good. On the audio visual, Afsal, you've got your hand up as well. Yeah. Uh... All right. Do you guys have, have any questions before we proceed? A couple of you have got your hands up. Just wanted to make sure uh, I can address any questions that you may have. Otherwise, no. All right. Okay. I think we are all good. Good to go. All right. Okay. All right. So key news events. So this is, uh, how do we search for key new events? One good uh, website is Forex Factory, which I believe uh, many of you should be familiar with. If not, don't worry. I'll show you how to get to it. So do look out for Forex Factory. The economic calendar on Forex Factory is very useful and it helps us to identify high impact news events. So the high impact news events are classified by these uh, 
uh, images markings here that you see on the left. So red obviously means this is the most impact, uh, the most the highest level of impact, and orange is the second highest level. Right. So there's basically four levels of uh that you can choose from, and I'll show you how to get to it. Right. So let's just switch over to uh forex factory. So basically, right. If you go to Google and you just type forex factory. Right, you should see this list come up. This is usually the first hit that you will see on Google search and you can just click on calendar, right? So my time is set on GMT time. So I leave it up to you as to your particular time zone, whichever uh, time zone you're currently residing in. Otherwise, I prefer to use GMT zero, right? So once I've set it to GMT zero, I will go next, go on to um, the date range. So let's just say we want to look at data since the last week. So 4th of September till today, 11th of September. So this is the date range I'm selecting. You can do it all for a single day, a couple of days for the whole week or two weeks. Uh, it's up to you to set the date range. All right, so then you know, apply the settings. Right, as you can see here, there's a lot of news events that have taken place over the last uh, six trading days. But of course, not every event is going to be going to have a high uh, impact or going to be uh, having a really strong, uh, acting as a really strong catalyst for that particular instrument. So what we're going to do is we're going to filter, right? So we go to the filter tab here, click on filter. You can see all the currencies. Now, if you're just focusing on uh, maybe just the Aussie and the Kiwi, then of course you just click on Aussie, New Zealand and USD. Uh, but of course, generally, I tend to leave all the select all the currencies and of course, all the event types. Now, for the expected impact, as I mentioned earlier, there are four levels. So, of, of course, not every single event is going to be market moving. So, hence, we will only select the two most highest uh, uh, levels, right? Which is for which is the red folder or rather the calendar for the icon, right? The icon calendar, the red calendar, and the orange calendar. So this is how we try and filter for the most uh, impactful events for that particular time range or date range, right? So for example, last week, we had the RBA statement, right? So uh, this was released on 5th September, uh, 4.30 a.m., uh, so we can see the market. Good thing about Forex Factory is not only it will highlight uh, the, the level of impact, but it also gives you the previous month's uh, reading as well as the forecast and the actual data. And if you click on the graph, uh, the chart icon or the graph icon, you're able to visualize the historical uh, readings as well. So you can filter uh, the date range as well. You can adjust the date range to go back as far as... Okay, you can go back pretty far, over 20 years for certain um, uh, news events, right? But for this, let's just go back to the last three years. So you can see how the RBA has raised rates uh, pretty quickly since uh, early 2022, right? So you can also click on the graph or chart icon to visualize that particular, uh, the history of that particular data or news event. So similarly for... GDP, I can click on that and I'll see, be able to, to see Swiss GDP readings over the past few quarters. Now, the other thing about it is also, if I were to click on the folder icon here, and then I can click on latest release, it takes me to the respective website. So for, in this case, for the RBA, it takes me to the RBA website where I can uh, read the statement in detail if I wish to do so and any other things that may be relevant uh, to that particular uh, news event, right? So this is because RBA's rate statement. So when I click on latest release, it takes me to the media releases uh, section of their website. And then if I click on statement by Philip Lowe, I can see the full statement uh, presented on the website. Then similarly, if I were to click on the cash rate, the folder for cash rate, and I click on latest release, it will take me to the cash rate target place. So you can see, uh, in more detail when they've actually raised rates and by how many basis points, right? So in quarter of a percentage means 25 basis points. And as you can see, since 5th of July, they have kept interest rates on hold, right? So this is how you can use Forex Factory 
uh, and interpret the data and also get additional information should you wish to explore uh, more about that particular news event. Right. And, and also the good thing about Forex Factory is of the uh, data, the actual data that is printed, it, it is color coded. So generally, uh, sometimes we may not uh, fully understand how to interpret the data that comes out. So in this case, when the number comes in red, it means that it is uh uh it should have generally it should have a negative outcome for that particular uh currency that could be related to this. So in this case, uh fifty one point eight was lower than the forecast of fifty three point six. So that means this was a lower reading. So hence this figure uh is printed in red or highlighted in red. So what this means is if you're looking at Kaisin Services PMI, which is the China uh PMI services. So generally, this could have a negative impact on crude oil prices, right? With China being uh, the third largest economy, any slowdown in PMI activity uh, could signal weak internal demand as well as external demand for its goods and services. So because of that, uh, you markets may think that uh, crude oil demand in China is starting to fall. So hence, uh, crude prices could experience a short-term pullback. So that's how we can interpret the data. So similarly here, 54.5 for ISM services, PMI. So this tracks the PMI activity for the services sector in the US. So the forecast was 52.5. The previous month's reading was 52.7. So the actual reading last week came out at 54.5 and it's highlighted in green. So this means the data was stronger than expected and we can also say it was stronger than the previous month's reading. So this means that generally this should act as a bullish catalyst for the dollar index right this is how simply we can uh use to interpret use forex factory and the color codes or the color highlights to in to quickly interpret the data okay there's a question as well does the actual value reflect on time thank you yes okay for forex factory they're generally very quick so usually within uh a few seconds or maybe just uh 30 seconds the data is uh updated here. So it's actually pretty quick. It is actually pretty quick. There may be just uh, usually a slight delay of a few seconds, but no, it should no, it should not be any longer than uh, 30 seconds or more, right? So this is how, that's the good thing about Forex Factory as well. It is uh, practically real-time updates with the relevant color uh, highlights to enable us to quickly interpret the data, right? So similarly, we also have unemployment claims here. So the previous week's reading, unemployment claims come in on a weekly basis. So the previous week, you had claims coming in at 229,000. So unemployment claims means the number of individuals who are filing for unemployment benefits in the US. So if you have more people filing for claims, this means that the labor market could be starting to slow. And that usually is a bearish catalyst for the dollar index. But if the number of claims are lower than expected, then this means there are less people filing for unemployment benefits. Uh, that means the labor market in the US is still robust, it is strong, and generally this acts as a bullish catalyst for uh, the dollar index. So just by looking at the color highlight of the actual data that printed last week, we can see the forecast was 232,000. The previous week's reading was 229,000. But the actual reading came in at 216,000, right? So this 216,000 is highlighted in green, which means that the number of claims came in less than the forecast and also less than the previous week's reading. So this means this green highlight here indicates that this should act as a bullish catalyst for the dollar index. And once we know that this would act as a bullish catalyst for the dollar index, then naturally, this would also be uh, acting as a negative catalyst for gold prices since we know gold and the dollar index has a negative correlation and also this would mean the euro currency such as the euro and the pound would also be falling since this data event was a bullish catalyst for the dollar index all right okay you're welcome uh milad all right okay so this is how we can use our forex factory uh to filter through and identify key events that are coming up and how, how to quickly interpret the data as well Okay, so let me just uh, look, uh, highlight the key events coming up this week, 
right? So 11 to 15 of September. So, okay, I'll just focus on, um, uh, okay, so tomorrow we've got claimant count, average earnings index. So basically we're going to see uh, labor market data coming out of the UK, right? So this was going to have, especially claimant count, we could have, uh, this could have a big impact on the pound tomorrow. This comes out at 6 a.m. GMT, 12 September, Tuesday, right? So claimant count is the equivalent of uh, unemployment claims in the US. So do remember this is a UK event. So the forecast is coming in at 17,000 uh, versus last the previous month's reading of 29,000. So what this means is the number of people they are expecting to file for claimant count. So claimant count is the number of people claiming unemployment related benefits. Right? So similar to the US unemployment claims. So if this actual reading comes in lower than the forecast of 17,000, which would naturally be lower than the previous month's reading, then this generally should act as a bullish catalyst for the pound. At least for the short term, you should see uh, this acting as a bullish catalyst for the pound. And this data should come in, should be printed in green or highlighted in green. However, if the data comes in higher than the forecast of 17,000K, uh, maybe it comes in about 20,000, 21,000, this figure should be highlighted in red. And generally, this would act as a negative or bearish catalyst for the pound. Now, the big one coming up on Wednesday, 13th of September is CPI data in the US. As we all know, central banks have been rising, uh, raising interest rates due to rising uh, inflation. And the headline CPI reading on an annualized basis, Y slash Y means year over year or annualized basis, it has been retreating pretty sharply since um, middle of last year. So over for the past 11 to 12 months, headline CPI has been falling very rapidly, but July's reading actually edged higher from 3% uh, to 3.2%. Now, this is uh, causes the Federal Reserve to be a little, uh, raises some concern for the Federal Reserve, because if we see inflation start to creep back into the US economy, then it's quite likely the Federal Reserve may uh, continue to raise rates at next week's FOMC meeting as well. So as you can see here, uh, CPI data has been falling uh, or retreating very sharply, but July's reading edged higher to 3.2% from 3%, and the forecast for August is pointing to an increase of 3.6%. So economists are expecting this figure to increase in for the month of August, and that means uh, we could potentially see inflation creeping back in. So how do we interpret this data for tomorrow of, for, sorry, for Wednesday? If the reading comes in uh, higher than expected, 3.6%, that means inflation is coming back in, then this would cause the Federal Reserve to remain hawkish. So this could potentially act as a bullish catalyst for the dollar index as well. All right, okay, if there's a question again, uh, if there are two red USD and one green at the same time, what would, do I do, sell or buy? Okay. This really depends on uh, how the market has digested or uh, inferred the information, right? So this is where you would need to use technical analysis to quickly determine how the markets have interpreted this data and where the actual flows are going, right? If I just look at uh, two out of three, in my opinion, I could say, oh, I think this is going to be a bullish catalyst for uh, the dollar index, for example, but the market could take it another way. So when you have uh, mixed data results and like like what you have uh, have what you have asked in this in this type of scenario, although we can form an form an opinion and decide and think that okay, I think now this is bearish or or this is going to be bullish, but ultimately it's the market that's going to di dictate the move. So that's where I would suggest that we would follow the technical analysis and see where price is taking, uh, uh, where, where price is determining the outcome of that data. All right. Hi, Karim. Uh, okay. There's a question as well. Okay. Because the forecast is 3.6%, which is higher than the previous month's reading at 3.2%, even if the reading comes in under 3.6%, which is quite unlikely uh, based on how we've seen 
oil uh, crude oil prices increase uh, gasoline prices increase in the US so um, energy prices in the US have increased over the last two months it is quite unlikely that we would see of the actual data come in under 3.6 but let's just say if it does come in under 3.6 now then this, this leaves it to inter, inter, uh, interpretation by the markets as well let's just uh, assume that data comes in under 3.6 percent let's just say it comes in at 3.4 percent but although it was lower than the forecast it is still higher than uh, the previous month's reading and this would in, this would still result in inflation rising for the second consecutive month so this could still result in a scenario where it is bullish for the US dollar or the dollar index, but may not be as bullish as if the data had actually matched the forecast or come in higher than the forecast. All right, I hope uh, that can help uh, clarify your question, All right? So this is how we can uh, try and interpret some of the data. Okay, let's, um, uh, now that I've showed you how to use or uh, how to navigate through Forex Factory. Uh, let's just uh, go back to the slides and then we'll try and uh, cover some real life examples as well. Right, so this is an, uh, this we've covered, we've covered uh, the economic calendar on Forex Factory and how to use it and how to interpret the data. Okay, I mentioned referencing the higher time frame. Generally, at least looking at the one hour time frame would be, uh, uh, sufficient enough to at least identify the current trend for that day or that or the last one or two days and then which time frame should you use for day trading right so we, since this is, we are looking at uh news catalyst events generally 15 minutes or five five minutes or 15 minute time frames would be very applicable right and then also we would need to try and identify momentum we can use that by using uh Momentum indicators such as MACD, right? For those who are not familiar with MACD, it's a moving average convergence divergence uh, indicator, right? So it uses three exponential moving averages to identify price movements. The difference between these averages is shown in the histogram, right? So the movement can show whether a trend is strength, strengthening or weakening. So this could be uh, whether the trend, a bullish trend is strengthening or weakening, and conversely, whether the bearish trend is strengthening or weakening. Right. However, do take note, MACD is a lagging indicator. So moving averages are always lagging behind the price action. So um, although uh, you may see the MACD pointing to a certain trend or certain direction, but because once the news events uh, hit the, once the news economic event are released, we will see price action uh, uh, react first before MACD Sort, sort of confirms the move. So MACD is, more, I guess you could say, is more of a confirmation uh, indicator in this type of scenario, right? Okay, and there's also, you can also use the RSI as well, to uh, which is the relative strength indicator to uh, sort of uh, identify oversold or overbought positions as well as the stochastic oscillator uh, as well. All right, now we're going to look at a few examples about taking the trade. All right, so I'm going to use just some examples, which are the U.S. unemployment claim, which we mentioned. Now, this is a weekly uh, news event that's released at 12.30 p.m. GMT every Thursday. So the good thing about this, this is a weekly uh, news event. So we are able to trade this every week. It's not like central bank interest rate decisions or inflation uh, data such as CPI, which come out on a monthly basis. All right, so we can use something like, uh, we can trade the US unemployment claims more regularly. And so, so instead of just trading the NFPs every month, we can use the unemployment claims as well. All right, okay, so here I am on the chart uh, for unemployment claims. This is, okay, I'm just gonna go through a few of the previous uh, examples, and then I'll show you some of the more recent examples as well and how we can uh, set up the trade uh, for such scenarios and news events. All right, okay, uh, before we get to that, uh, just give me a minute. All right, just give me a minute. I'll be right back.
I was sorry. Apologies for that. Just uh, back to quickly sort something out. All right. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. There's a question as well by David. The red figures indicate bearish index as well as green figures. Okay. In general, when you are uh, trying to interpret the data on Forex Factory, the red, if the figures are highlighted in red, it generally uh means that it's going to be negative. It's going to act as a negative or bearish catalyst for that particular uh instrument that would be tied or that would be related to that economic event. And if it's green, generally it would it should act as a bullish catalyst. And just to <clears throat> that's how we can um simply interpret the data without getting too much into uh the actual understanding of what that data point means. All right, okay. Okay, so, <clears throat> right. Okay, so here we are on the chart for the dollar index. Here I am on the one hour frame. So this in this example, this is 15th of June. 12.30 p.m. GMT, where unemployment claims was released. <clears throat> so I'm on the one-hour candle, and this is on the 12 uh, p.m. GMT candle here. And this news event is released at 12.30. So we can see at 12 p.m., price was trading at about um 103.30, and it swiftly fell uh, over the next few candles. So I guess you can assume that this news event on this particular date was bearish for uh, the dollar index, right? So let's go back to Forex Factory and see how this data actually printed on that day. So this is 15th of June, 12.30 p.m. So let's go back to Forex Factory. Let's just go back to exactly 15th of June. Go to Thursday, 12.30 p.m. So we have unemployment claims here. So right, so you can see the data <clears throat> Actual claims came in at 262,000. It's highlighted in red, which was higher than the forecast, and it matched the previous week's reading as well. So the main thing to take away that is that it came in higher than the forecast and it's highlighted in red. So if it's highlighted in red, that means this is negative for the bearish, uh, negative or bearish catalyst for the dollar index, which is seen in the chart here very clearly. Right, so this this is on the one hour time frame. So you can see clearly, uh, twelve thirty the news is released, but even the second, third, fourth, fifth candles, you can see three to four hours of uh relatively strong selling of the dollar index. So what I'm trying to show you here on the one hour time frame is generally, we don't have to take a position before the news uh drops. Right, we can actually wait uh for the news to be released. And then quickly interpret the data, uh, do technical analysis, maybe wait for the five minute candle to close and then open a position. Because in this scenario, let's just say we have, uh, we, for whatever reason, we had come to the conclusion that, oh, okay, I think unemployment claims are going to be coming in lower than uh, the forecast. So that should act as a bullish catalyst. So I decided to go long just before the news was released. Had I done that and... Uh, not kept the stop loss or kept the stop loss, say perhaps below this swing low here that took place uh, the day before, I would have been stopped out, right? It would have been a trade uh, that didn't work out. But since we are not able to, if we are unable to really uh, identify a, or come to a conclusion as to how the data will actually be, uh, uh, be released, I, as in, is it going to be lower or higher than the forecast? I would suggest to wait for the data to be released. Uh, at least wait for the one or two five minute candles to be to be formed, and then we can take the position, right? Uh, then we can open the position. So I'll show this on the lower time frames as well, right? So here we can see generally on at least on the one hour time frame, along with MACD, we can see that. Uh, at least for the first, at least for the past few uh, days prior to this data, in dollar index was sort of consolidating and trending lower. But just going into the data, uh, maybe like the day before, it started to have a relatively strong uh, bounce higher. But then once the data was released, it uh, the downtrend resumed. All right, so we can see how the bearish catalyst can have a, a big. Uh, impact on the direction of that particular instrument. So in this case, it's unemployment claims and the dollar index. Right, okay. So 
so let's just this is 15 June. Okay, and similarly on gold as well. So what would be a negative catalyst for the dollar index, right? Uh, we saw the data coming in higher than forecast. It was printed in red. Uh, just to highlight this again, go back to Forex Factory. You see it here, right? The data is highlighted in red. So this is negative for the dollar index, which would mean, uh, of course, then we see dollar index falling, uh, which would mean this would be uh, acting as a bullish catalyst for gold prices as well. So gold is uh, the instrument that we see here, right? XAU USD. You can see it was trading at about $1,930 per ounce. Uh, before the news was released. And then once the news was released, over the next two to three hours, we saw it rise as high as 1,960. So these are hourly candles. So once again, you don't have to uh, take a position before the news hits the wires. We can actually wait for the news to, to be released, quickly inter interpret the data with the help of Forex Factory, then use technical analysis on the five minute candle, and then we can enter the trade, which I will go through as well in uh, uh, on trading view as well. What is the parameter for bank D? Okay, so in this case, it's just the default setting. So if I go <clears throat> um, to trading view right now, let's just switch over to trading view. Right, here I am on the dollar index chart. So here we are, I've got MACD up, I've got stochastic up as well. So I'm just gonna click on the settings icon. So I just use the default settings for MACD, which is, uh, here we go, inputs. So it's 12, 26, and nine, right? These are the default settings for MACD, which I generally use. And I don't really change, have any customized parameters for MACD, right? Okay, so, um, Let's use a uh, more something of a more recent example, right? So if you go to Forex Factory, let's look at last week's claims numbers that came up. Okay, let's look at last week's claim numbers that came up, uh, which would be seventh of uh, September, right? So seventh of September, unemployment claims highlighted in green for uh, actual reading of 260,000, which was lower than the forecast of 232,000. So this should act as a bullish catalyst for the dollar index. So let's see if that's how it played out on uh, 7 September, 12.30 p.m. GMT. So, right, so let's go on to... Right, so here we are, dollar index chart. I have a four hour time frame. Let's just zoom in onto the 30 minute time frame. Uh, and for now, let's just uh, focus on the price action itself and identify the event. So 7 September 12th. Okay, and I'm on GMT time. Am I? No, I'm not on GMT time here. Very important to be on the right time frame. So let's set this to uh, GMT time as well. All right, so now I'm on GMT time on trading view as well as my calendar on Forex Factory, right? It's always important to make sure your time uh, your time zone is synchronized across all the different platforms and websites, just to make, sh just to make sure we are not trading the wrong event at the wrong time, uh, right? Okay, so 7 September, 12.30 p.m. GMT, let's look for that and, and mark it as well. Uh, so here we go. Right, okay, and let's just zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we can see here Thursday, 7 September, 12.30 p.m. Uh, this was when the news was dropped, uh, news was released. This was uh, highlighted in green, which should act as a bullish catalyst for the dollar index. And as you can see, it really did act as a bullish catalyst, but you could see it was a pretty volatile event as well. You could see in this scenario where we didn't have subsequent uh, consecutive candles where price just continued to rise. Actually, it rose for the first hour, going as high as uh, this 105.15 before tumbling and reversing, coming back to where it started and then moving higher again. So you can see it, it doesn't mean that it's always going to uh, continue to trend up uh, strongly in a bullish trend or it will drop lower on a bearish trend, right? Okay, so you just have to take note every time, every data event is different and we should always be uh, be ready to 
to expect the unexpected, I guess. Yeah. All right. Okay. So since this is a 30 minute chart, we can see uh, that the event was uh, highlighted in green, acting as a bullish catalyst, which it did. So price opened at about 105, uh, going as high as 105.15. Uh, this is a 15 minute, uh, about 15 pips here. And in the end, it went as high as 105.15 by 1400 hours. Now, if you were to look at gold uh, over this same period, we can see, let's see, where is it? 12.30 p.m. 7 September. Right. So you can see as well. So what is a bearish uh, catalyst or bullish catalyst for the dollar index would act as a bearish catalyst for uh, gold prices. So you can see gold opened at 12.30 p.m. GMT at 1,921 falling as low as 1916 before reversing to go higher and then uh, re reversing lower as well. I think there was a very, uh, why was it very volatile on this date? There's no, there's no other major events that came up. Let me just see if there was anything else that could have impacted this uh, data news. 12th unemployment claims. No, there was really nothing else, but it was just, it just happened to be a very, volatile uh, price action on this occasion. So green for unemployment claims means bullish for the dollar index, negative for gold prices, which is what we see play out. Okay, so if you go back to uh, dollar index and let's go into the five minute time frame. Then let's go back to 7 September as well. So 7 September, 12.15 p.m., 12.30 p.m. is here, highlighted here. So, okay, in this scenario, it's actually quite hard to actually wait for the five-minute candle to wait uh, and then take the trade. Because you can see this time there was no follow-through, there was no momentum as well to push prices higher. Uh, let's see in the previous week if we had what happened in the previous week, which would have been... Uh, August, right? 31st August. So in this case, 31st August, we had unemployment claims uh, again coming in lower than the forecast, which is bullish. So let's see if on this occasion, we had a much more sustained move. Okay, so let's go 31st August. Right, okay, here, 31st August, 12 p.m. I'm on a one hour time frame. Okay, let me switch it to 30th minute, 30 minute time frame. Uh, and then here, 12.30, so here. Okay, so in this scenario here, there was a much more uh, sustained uh, move to the upside. Of course, this was after uh, price had sort of consolidated and then before reversing to go higher. So you can see that Sometimes it is indeed better to wait for uh, the data to be released and then quickly in, uh, try and interpret the data and then use technical analysis uh, on the lower time frame to try and identify uh, a potential entry point if we are bullish for this instrument. All right, there's a question by Valentin as well. How do I use Forex Factory and Trading View? is what I want to know. Okay. Um, uh, Valentin, did you catch the first part where we covered Forex Factory and how to use and how to interpret the data? Right. Uh, all right. Okay. So if we look at it, basically, um, okay, just to quickly recap, I'm not sure if you have seen this. Okay. So basically, under filter, there's four levels of impact, expected impact. So we're going to choose the two highest one, which is the red calendar and orange calendar. We're going to select all the event types as well as all the currencies and then apply the filter. Of course, time zone, set the time zone according to where you're residing and look at the date. Uh, like if you're looking at this week's data, look at set the date range for this week and you can highlight all the events. So generally, uh, if the data comes in, is highlighted in green, this means this should act as a bullish catalyst for uh, the instrument that's related to this event. So in this case, for unemployment claims, it is the dollar index. 
So this should act as a bullish catalyst for the dollar index. And that means also it's going to act as a bearish catalyst for gold. It's going to act as a bearish catalyst for the euro and the pound as well. Right. So this is how we can use uh, this. Uh, uh, this is how we can use this data. All right. Uh, how to use trading. Okay. I'm mean, just showing you trading view. Of course, when you're on your platform with Tickmill, you'll be using your your charting tools. So you can just use that to try and uh, perform your TA and and uh, do the analysis. Okay. How, there's another question by Jaden as well. Um, how do you use manufacturing services PMI to predict the strengthening and weakening of the dollar? Okay. So that um, you can do that as well. Okay. So similarly, we had PMI services data come out last week. Uh, so that was, was it Thursday as well? When was it? It was, okay, oops, let me just scroll through the whole week. Okay, here we are. So it was 6 September, Wednesday. So whether it's ISM services PMI or ISM manufacturing PMI, generally you will look at the main headline reading. So if this figure comes in in green, that generally means that this is bullish for the dollar index. And if it comes in, in red, it generally should act as a bearish catalyst for the dollar index. Now, this is the same. Uh, this should apply uh, to ISM manufacturing PMI as well. All right. This is how we can uh, interpret the data for manufacturing and services PMI. So just do take note. If it's green, uh, if PMI data is green, this should act as a bullish catalyst for that particular currency. So in this case, this is ISM services. So this would be bullish for uh, the dollar index. If this was the Eurozone uh, services PMI or the composite PMI, if this came in in green, then this should act as a bullish catalyst for the Euro, right? So similarly, um, the ISM would also work for other uh, countries as well, right? And the interpretation of the data should be similar as well. That's why I said it. And that's why I, I would like to just stress that the green should generally act as a bullish catalyst, right? And why do I say generally? Because there can be instances where the in, uh, reading is bullish for that particular instrument, but price action may not play out that way because there may be other factors at play at that point in time during the market. There could be other news events that are happening. There could be other... Uh, uh, it just could be the positioning of the traders as well. So you have to take note, never take any um, individual economic data point in isolation. Generally, it does work. It would act as a bullish catalyst or it would act as a negative catalyst, bearish catalyst. That's why I said it generally should behave that way. But it doesn't mean it is guaranteed to behave that way. Yeah. So do take note of that because we're just looking at one particular data point to trigger... Uh, a move, uh, this could be a bullish move or a bearish move. So do take note, it's just one particular data point at that particular time. And it doesn't mean that because this data came in in green, it's highlighted in green, oh, then I must assume that dollar index will definitely rise and go higher. There could be other factors at play that could override this uh, bullish data and actually cause dollar index to fall. All right, so do take note of that. And I'd just like to highlight that point as well. So whenever we are trading any economic news event at that particular point in time, it could have that intended impact on the direction of that currency. But do take note that that may not always play out uh, every time. And you could also see the price reversal take place as well. A potential price reversal could actually occur as well. Right. Okay. So if we go back to dollar index here, uh, and I go in onto the five hour time frame, the thirty first August, twelve thirty p.m. This is six. This is here. We go. Where's twelve thirty p.m. Ah. Uh, right. Okay. Sorry. Here we go. So here I am on the five minute candle, right? Okay, so the news for in this example, uh, data was positive for uh, this unemployment. Okay, so I'll go back to 31st. Let's go back to 31st, sorry. 
All right, so in this case, unemployment claims uh, did uh, come in in green, lower than the forecast, acting as a bullish, potential bullish catalyst for the dollar index. So, but however, when this news was initially released, we could actually, the dollar index actually fell. It uh, opened at about 103.60 and fell as low as, what is this, 103.27, right? So in this scenario, we may be a bit confused, right? We could have seen, okay, this should be acting as a bullish catalyst for the dollar index, but in fact, it actually fell. But if you see price not, and then after that, you see price not, uh, falling beyond or lower 10320 or 330 you could assume you can we can quickly do our technical analysis and we can say that okay um very likely because the data was bullish price seems to be uh consolidating about 10330 10340 you could still take open a position to the long side and you could put your stop loss and just a few pips maybe 10 to 20 pips below uh the low of this week here, right? Just to give you a little bit of breathing room and also depending on your risk reward ratio as well. So you could interpret the data and then also let's just put uh, MACD and stochastic up as well. So if we do look at the five minute chart, right? We can also see that, oh, okay. MACD uh, has uh, weakened quite uh, significantly, right? This is a, a very, Initially, a very bearish move to the downside. We can also see stochastics drop below 20 as well, potentially indicating um, an oversold uh, position or oversold and situation for the dollar index. But because we know the data came in positive, we may uh, use this uh, indicators right to see that, okay, this is an oversold position on the dollar index based on stochastics. And because price has not broken below uh, 103.20, we could potentially see price bounce off this level as well. So you could, based on the data, you could still enter a long position here because we can see MACD starting, the bearish momentum starting to uh, weaken, right? This is how we mentioned MACD can be used to identify momentum to the upside or downside. So when you see the histogram in red like this, it means we have strong bearish momentum, but then we start to see the histogram uh, reducing right so it's making uh in a sense higher lows so when that happens you can see the bearish momentum is fading we can also see stochastics after hitting uh oversold position dropping below 20 starting to rise up and because we have the data that's pointing to a potential bullish catalyst it is still we can use the, the macd and the stochastics the to identify that this is potentially a bottom uh, for the dollar index and it's maybe we could see the bullish momentum take over. So we could enter uh, the position here over the next few candles. And then how would you identify the downside? You would probably want to give yourself a bit of buffer, maybe 10 to 20 pips under this the low of this week. And then you could see, yes. So even if it entered at 103.40, uh, you could see price uh, going up as high as 104. I'm sorry, what is this? This one of 340, yes, going up as high as 104, 20. So almost 100 pips, right? You could see, you could gain almost 100 pips as well. So we can see how um, we can use the combination of the MACD, stochastics, and the data to identify a potential long position for MACD, uh, long position on the dollar index. And where would we try and uh, identify the take profit level? Right, you can see here, stochastic has hit gone above 80, which generally indicates an oversold position. We can also see the histogram turn green. So this indicates a very strong bullish momentum for price. But then you see the histogram sort of peak and start to make lower highs and it starts to fade lower. Right? We can never call the absolute top or absolute bottom in any uh, environment or price action. But generally, when you do see uh, the histogram start to weaken in this case the bullish histogram start to weaken and you finally see the macd uh, line uh, cross over below the signal line uh, that's when you can probably say all right when it's somewhere around here we can also see the momentum fading the bullish momentum fading on the histogram we can also see uh, the macd line uh, crossing over or the signal line trying to cross 
under the MACD line. So this would be an area. Uh, let me highlight this as a zone. Uh, yeah, this would be a potential. Right, from here onwards, if you can see, right, my cross has as well, you can see the bullish uh, momentum on the MACD uh, fading is basically is making lower highs. You can also see the signal line uh, trying to cross underneath. So around this period is where we would start to um, identify a take profit position as well, a, a, a take profit zone. So this is the point where we would be looking to exit the position had we gone long around here. Right. As I mentioned, we, we can never call the absolute top and absolute bottom on any trade. So if you can get close to about 60 to 70% of that absolute move, I think that's a very good result as it is. Right. Okay. Uh, hi, Shem. Yes. Okay. For this, yes. As you can see here, uh, I am using just 23.3 as the inputs for the stochastics right yes in this case here yeah, you're right as you can see here it's highlighted uh in this uh window here as well my right? stochastic is uh oh sorry 31st wait so where am i 31st august oh sorry apologies oh yes first september good call where am i 31st August 12.30, so wait. Ah, apologies, apologies. Okay, uh, right, actually, this is here. We should be looking here. Okay, right, 31st, 12.30. Okay, apologies for that. This is the correct time, uh, time frame that we're supposed to be looking at. So, okay, so 31st August 12.30 p.m., the news was dropped. News was released. Price actually fell uh, lower. The candle closed in green. But once again, the analysis doesn't change. The analysis doesn't change in the sense that stochastics pointed to an oversold position. Uh, we also see the momentum, uh, the bearish momentum fading and starting to uh, uh, become weaker. So this, and especially with stochastics bouncing up from the oversold position going higher, because we know the data is uh, generally positive and should act as a bullish catalyst for the dollar index, we can, uh, after the first one or two candles, we can open a long position here. And then we would ideally set the stop loss to just below, again, 10 to 20 pips below this uh, low of the candle here. And similarly, where would we identify a potential exit again using the MACD uh, combination of using the MACD histogram and the signal line as well as the stochastic so once you can see that the momentum is actually starting to fade in this case again the move wasn't as uh didn't have as high impact as it as we were expecting but this is how you can use the combination of stochastics and MACD to identify the entry a potential entry and use the data to give us some sort of confidence that this should act as a bullish catalyst for the dollar index. And then you can use the fading MACD momentum uh, to identify the take profit area or take profit zone, sorry, rather take profit zone. So now let's see on gold if uh, we can use the same uh, setup. All right, so 31st August, 12.30 p.m., All right, so here we are, 31st August. All right, 12.30 p.m. Okay, let's just zoom in now. Okay, for gold, it's a little bit harder. All right, so bullish catalyst for dollar index. This should be bearish for gold. So you can see, actually, gold did fall over the next two candles, but then it continued to retrace higher. But if we... But because we know the data was bullish for dollar index, so that means it should be acting as a negative catalyst for the dollar index. Uh, we can actually wait, for example, wait for the five minutes, the first five minute candle to, to close. 
And then once the second candle opens at 12.35, we can uh, open the short position here because we're expecting dollar, uh, the gold prices to drop because dollar is going to be bullish. And we can identify the stop loss at slightly above this week here that took place, right? We don't want to have a very large stop loss, be it in terms of an uh, absolute terms or be it in terms of a percentage because this is a news, we're day trading, it's a news related event. Uh, we're going to place the stop loss anywhere between 10 to 20 pips above the high of this week. And then um, we can open the short position because we can see even though price retraced here and if we did manage to get a position here on the second candle at 12.35 p.m. GMT, we would have still had a pretty decent uh, stop loss level, a relatively comfortable stop loss level. And then we could see price fade and continue to uh, gold prices continue to fall it was much more choppier here we can see a lot of uh, retracements back higher but once again uh this is how you can use this data and uh the previous candles high to identify the stop loss in terms of take profit right you can see the macd gaining uh gaining uh becoming weaker so this is uh indicating the bearish momentum, the continuation of the bearish momentum. Now you can see here at 12, 13, 13, 45 and 13, 50, the bearish momentum uh, starting to sort of fade. Right, so this is would be a zone where we could potentially Right, this would be a zone here uh, highlighted by this rectangle where we could potentially look to start to exit the position as well. So this is generally how we can use it for unemployment claims, but also do take note, you can use this for any other data event as well, right? You can use it across other data events as well. What's a bias on the CPI data, bullish or bearish? All right, Jaden. Okay, right. So because we do have, let's focus on what's coming up this week and how you can... Uh, try and uh, position ourselves. Right, okay. So for tomorrow, we have claimant count coming out at 6 a.m. So do take note, this uh, is the equivalent of unemployment claims, but for the UK, forecast is 17.1K. So if the data comes in lower than the forecast, this should number should be in green. So this should act as a potential bullish catalyst for the pound in the short term. Similarly, if a number comes in higher than the forecast, this figure should be in red and this should act as a potential bearish catalyst for the pound in the short term. Similarly, for CPI, pardon me, CPI, we've got the core reading as well as uh, the headline reading, right? So when it's just CPI, that refers to the headline reading, which, is, which includes all the categories. When it says core, it's all the categories minus uh, food and energy. Right, so the bias, you can see the forecast is, is set for 3.6%. We are already seeing um, ISM services, right? If I go back, if I look at ISM services, the good thing about the uh, PMI reports, ISM PMI reports for the US manufacturing services, we can also get an insight into the... Um, Inflation level of inflation for that particular sector. So for the man manufacturing sector, we have a sub-index index called prices. So we can see that, okay, just to take note for maybe those who may not be familiar with uh, PMI numbers, any reading under 50 indicates contraction. That means that particular sub-index is actually uh, contracting. And any reading above 50 means that that sub-index is actually increasing. So we can see prices have been under 50 uh, for the last four months, but it's actually increasing, right? So we can see prices, although it's still contracting at an index level, but at an absolute term or relative term, it's actually increasing. And if you go into the prices here, we can see it sort of bottom here and prices in the manufacturing sector are actually starting to sort of increase. Similarly, if you look at, the ISM services uh, report, we look at the prices sub-index, we can see that prices have been expanding for 75 consecutive months. And the latest reading for August actually increased from 56.8 to 58.9. So if you go into the relevant price index here, we can see over the last two months, ISM prices have increased. So does this does give us some level of confidence that 
CPI data for the month of August is actually going to come in at 3.6% at the very least. So for me, the bias is uh, to the upside. We may see inflation, actual uh, CPI headline actually perhaps even coming in at 3.7%, for example. And if that were to happen, we could definitely see a very strong bullish catalyst for the dollar index. So this is how I would interpret the CPI data. And because when we look at the manufacturing sector and the services sector of the US and we look at the prices sub-index or the prices component, we can see that they have picked up over the last two months. And that is why we are seeing this forecast of 3.6%, uh, which is because we, and we also know when we look at energy prices, we look at WTI oil, that's uh, gained quite significantly over the last few weeks. If you look at, uh, if we track US retail gas prices, they have also increased over the last few, uh, four to six weeks as well. So when you look at these uh, data points, it is quite likely that we will see CPI at least match the forecast here at 3.6%, which should act as a pretty uh, strong bullish catalyst for the dollar index. All right. Uh, where can we learn more about fundamental analysis? Well, Jaden, yeah, just stay tuned uh, with Thickmill as well. Um, they'll be coming up with, uh, we'll have upcoming webinars that may be conducted by myself or by my colleagues as well that will cover various uh, elements of fundamental analysis together with technical analysis. All right. Okay. Um, we are coming towards the end of today's webinar. Are there any questions um, with regards to how we can use uh, Forex Factory or how we can use uh, MACD and Stochastics as well to identify the momentum and also to identify fading momentum as well. Like similarly here, although this was first September Friday, uh, there was no, at least there may have been a data event, I'm not too sure, but we can see how an oversold position in the Stochastics on the five minute chart for gold uh, and we can see when the crossover happens as well. So we can see here, there's a crossover taking taking place here, where the MACD line crosses over the signal line. We can also see stochastic. There's a crossover taking here. So we can see that even on the five minute candle here, after once this candle is formed, here we can potentially see because see the cross uh the uh, momentum fades on uh, MACD. We can also see stochastics going under 20 here so generally when we see uh this sort of uh momentum uh or this sort of indicators here some uh we can uh, see that this is a potential long setup as well i think there may have been a news related event here let's see friday 1st september 1 a.m gmt was there, was there anything on that date See first September. Let's just do it over two days. So let's see thirty first, first. No, there was no real news at one a.m. GMT, but we did see gold prices spike up at that point in time. All right, okay. Um, uh, all right, okay. Thanks everyone. Okay, I'm just going to launch uh, a poll as well. Really appreciate it if you guys can uh, give your feedback because we're always looking to improve the webinars that we bring to you. Uh, it could be a combination of technical analysis, fundamental analysis, or just more technical as well. And yeah, do stay tuned um, for any upcoming webinars by Tickmill and uh, do remember to register for them as well. All right. Okay, thank you everyone. I uh, hope you had a great trading week. And do take note of the, I'll just leave you guys with Forex Factory for this week. Uh, yes, here we go. Do take note, these are the key events that are coming up. Uh, that are coming up this week and would definitely have an impact. So we'll just run through it again. Claimant count uh, for the British pound, uh, sterling pound on 12 September. Uh, CPI data for the dollar index and of course the majors and gold prices. It could have a big strong impact on that. 13 September, 12.30 p.m. GMT. 
We also have Australian labor force data coming out. Oh, we have the big one, uh, ECB interest rate decision, right? We have the ECB raising, uh, not raising, uh, announcing their interest rate decision at 12.15 p.m. GMT on Thursday, 14 September. Do take note, this could have a major impact on the direction of the euro, especially if CPI data comes in uh, strong, if US CPI data comes in strong, and then we see the ECB holding rates, keeping rates steady at 4.25%. Do take note, they've been raising rates uh, at every meeting since uh, middle of last year, but for the first time, Markets are expecting the ECB to keep rates on hold. Should they do that? And should also uh, ECB President Christine Lagarde come out being relatively neutral in a press conference at 12.45 p.m. GMT? These are components uh, that would potentially cause the euro to fall even further. So do take note in a scenario where we do get much uh, a very strong CPI reading on the 13th of September, Following which, 14 September, we see the ECB keeping rates on hold. And we also see President Christine Lagarde being relatively neutral in her outlook during the press conference. These are all elements that point to the euro to weaken further. So do take note of a potential scenario that could play out this week for the euro. All right. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. I uh, hope this has been a great session for all of you and look forward to seeing all of you at the next, at the next webinar. All right. Thank you, everyone. Take care and have a great trading week.